Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at data cleaning with formulas. So I'm gonna show you 15 data cleaning formulas that you need to know in Excel. Let's take a look. First up, let's take a look at unstacking a single column of data into a table. So oftentimes when you copy and paste into Excel, you might end up with something in a single column. So here we've got the column headings, and then we've got the first item in our table. So here we have a name, an address, a city, and a country. And then we've got the next row of data and the next, etc. And we want to convert that into a table. So we can use wrap rows to do that for us. So it's just going to take the thing that you want to wrap and that needs to be a single column. And in this case, we want a wrap count of four. So each of these has four items in it. And when we press enter, we've got our data in a tabular format now. Now we've got a similar function called wrap columns. And it's gonna do a similar thing. So let's give it a wrap count of four. But in this case, we end up wrapping across the column. So now each of our items is in one column going down the rows. Next, we've got the text split function that allows us to split data based on a delimiter. So here we have some addresses and we've got different components. So we have the street, city, and country and each of those is separated by a comma and a space. We can use text split to get those into different cells. So text split just takes our text value and then we can tell it what delimiter we want to split based on. So here we're going to use a comma and a space character. And when we press enter, we get our address into its different components. and we can copy and paste that down for each of our addresses. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the upper, lower, and proper functions. So these are gonna be very useful if you wanna standardize the case in your text data. So here we've got some names, and you can see the case for these names is all different. So we can use the upper function to get them all into uppercase. And now we've got all our names in uppercase characters. We can also use lower, and that's gonna get our names all in lowercase characters. And we also have a proper function. And that's gonna get our names into proper case. So, so each word gets the first letter capitalized, and then all of the other letters are gonna be lowercase after that. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the unique function. So this is going to allow us to remove duplicates from our data. So we can use the unique function on a single column here. And in this case, it gives us a list of all of our unique values for our department. And we can also use it for multiple columns And so let's give it the entire table. And then it's just going to return the unique rows. So these are gonna be the unique combinations of department and job title. Next up, let's take a look at how we can convert US format dates into year, month, day format. So if you're not in the US, those dates are actually gonna be text values. And so what we need to do is split them into their different components and then create a date from that. So we're gonna use text split to split them. And so we're gonna split this value here based on the slash. And then we get each of our date components in a different cell. And if we use the index function, then we can reference each of these based on its position. So for example, if we have a three here, then that's just gonna give us the year. And we can use each of these 
inside the date function to construct date. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then we're gonna use the date function. So the first argument is the year. So that's gonna be this. And we're gonna have the month, which is gonna be the first item in our split values. And then we're gonna have the day, which is the second item. And when we press enter, we get an Excel date value from our text values. And we can copy and paste this down to get all of our US dates into year, month, and day formatted dates. Next up, we've got the trim function. So this is gonna help us remove excess space characters from our text data. So here we've got some names, but you can actually see that there are some excess space characters in this data. And so we've got leading and trailing spaces in our text, as well as extra spaces between the names. And so that's gonna be a problem if we're trying to look up values in this table. So here we've got a lookup function that's trying to get the salary based on a name. And even though this name is here in our data, because of the space characters, we're not gonna get the correct value. So we can use the trim function to clean this up. And it's gonna remove all of those extra space characters. And now we can use with our lookup function, instead of looking at the name, we can look at the trimmed name. And then when we enter that formula, we now get the correct value in our lookup function. We also have a clean function. So this is going to allow us to remove non-printing characters from our text data. So here you can't even see that there are any extra characters in our names, but our lookup is returning an error because it can't find an exact match of the name. So these non-printing characters, these are ASCII characters and you can get them with the character function so characters one through 31 are gonna be these non-printing characters. And we can clean any of those from our text data with this clean function. So it just takes the text that you wanna remove them from. And now we've got our text data without those non-printing characters. And we can update our lookup function to use that instead of the name. And now our lookup function returns the correct result. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the left, right, and mid functions to extract characters from text data. So here we've got some product codes, and this is gonna help us extract a fixed number of characters from this. So we can use the left function to extract the leftmost characters. So it takes a text value that we wanna extract from and then a number of characters. So in this case, we want the first four characters from our product code. So this is gonna be a category. And then we just get the first four characters, which is our product category. We also have the right function. So it does a similar thing, but takes characters from the right side of our text. And here, let's get the last three characters. And we can also use the mid function. And this is gonna allow us to extract characters from this text here. And then we have to specify a starting position. So let's start from the sixth character and then return four characters. And when we press enter, that's gonna give us the year value in the middle here. Now these allow us to get a fixed number of characters, but we also have a text before and text after function that's going to allow us to get any text before or after a given delimiter. So text before is gonna allow us to get the text before a given delimiter. So here we're gonna extract the text before the dash from our product code and then we just need to specify what delimiter. So it's gonna be the dash character. And then we get our category code. 
And we've also got text after. And so we can extract from our product code based on the dash character. And we can also specify the instance number. So here, let's return after the second dash. And then we're gonna get our three digit numeric code from our product code. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the substitute function. So this is going to allow us to remove specific characters and then replace them with other characters. So here in our product code, if we want, we can use it to remove these dash characters. So it just takes the text that we wanna make our substitution in. And then we can specify what text to remove. So this is the old text. And here we're gonna remove our dash character. And then we also need to specify what we wanna replace it with. So here we're just gonna use an empty string to remove it completely. And now we've got our product code without those dash characters. We could also replace them with something like a space character if we wanted. And substitute also has an argument for the instance number. So if we want, we could just substitute the first occurrence of our dash and press enter. And now we've got our product code with a space between the category and then a dash between the year and the number. Next up, we have the choose columns function. So this is going to allow us to select certain columns from our data. So we just need to give it the entire array that we wanna select columns from. And then we can give it the column numbers. So for example, if we give it the number one here, then it's just gonna return the ID column. Maybe we want the ID, the product, and the price. Then we've just got those columns. And choose columns also accepts negative numbers. So this is going to count from right to left instead of left to right. So for example, if we give it minus two, then that's gonna give us the supplier as well. We've also got a choose rows function, which is going to allow us to select the rows from our data set. So it's going to work in a similar way to choose columns. We just need to give it the entire data set. And then we can specify which rows based on the row number to return. And then choose rows is going to return those rows. It also accepts negative numbers. So that's going to count from the bottom of our data to the top. So if we give it minus two, that's going to return the second last row from our data set. Next up, let's take a look at the take and drop functions. So these ones allow us to select or remove rows or columns from our data set. So first up, let's take a look at take. And so we just need to give it the entire table. And then we can specify either how many rows to keep or how many columns to keep, or both. So let's keep five rows, and that's gonna return the first five rows. Now, if we change this to a negative number, then that's gonna keep the last three rows. And we've also got a column parameter. So at the same time, we could just return the first three columns or maybe the last three. Now drop allows us to remove rows or columns based on a given number. So we just give it our entire table and then the rows to remove. So here, so here negative three means we're gonna remove the last three rows if we give it a positive number, then here we're gonna remove the first two rows. And it also has a columns parameter. 
So again, we could remove the first two columns from our results as well. Or with a negative number, the last two columns. So choose rows and choose columns allows you to specify exactly which rows and which columns to choose. Take and drop allow you to specify a given number of rows or columns. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the transpose function to so convert rows to columns and convert columns to rows. So transpose is an older function, but it wasn't really that useful until we got dynamic arrays and we were able to spill the results into many cells. So the transpose function just takes a single array of values. Here I'm gonna give it the table plus the column headers. And when we press enter, we get our transpose data. So here you can see that down the rows now we have the months, whereas they were across the columns here. And then across the columns here, we now have the regions as they were down the rows in our source data. Next up, we have XLOOKUP, which is gonna help us combine related tables of data. So here we've got a table of employees and it includes their department. And we've also got a table of departments. And so this includes a department name and a manager for that department. And we want to include the department name and manager in our employees data here. We can do that with XLOOKUP. So it's going to allow us to look for our department ID in our department table here. And then based on that, we can return both the department name and manager. And if we copy and paste this down, then we've got our department name and manager for each of our employees now. Now we can create a formula that's going to return all of this information in a single dynamic array. And the trick to that is gonna to be to use the reduce function, which allows us to loop through our department ID and perform an XLOOKUP for each of them. And then we can use HStack to combine our employee table with our looked up department name and manager for each employee. And this way, our results are in a single dynamic array. And lastly, we're gonna take a look at VStack, which is going to allow us to append data. So here we've got two tables, and if we wanna join them, we can use VStack to do that. So it just takes a list of arrays that you wanna append. So here we're gonna give it our first table and our second table. And when we press enter, we get those two combined. Now, unfortunately, VStack does this based on the column position. So if you rearrange some of these columns, then you're gonna end up with mixed data in each column. So you can build a formula that's going to append your data based on the column heading name instead of just the position. So here I've got a custom Lambda function that I've named append, and it's going to take our data, including the column headers, and then append them based on those column headings. So here you can see that our salary and department ID and bonus are all in the correct columns. And now our first table doesn't have a bonus column, so we get this NA error. And this append function allows us to take care of that with a pad argument. So here we can pad it with an empty string. And then we get those as blank values instead of errors. Now, if you wanna see the details behind this custom Lambda function, you can go up to the formula tab and name manager. And here is my custom Lambda, named append. And here is the Lambda formula for that. So you can get and use that by checking out the link below to download the file. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for future Excel videos like this one. 
That's it for this video and we'll see you in the next one.